what I'm going to preach to you this morning is on God's university. God's university. And God has a university. God has a school. That he's gonna. He's gonna take some of us through. And nobody signs up for this particular course or or God's university. Most of the time, we we look at it and we may not even want any, anything to do with it. But God has to bring you through, as that song says, some through trials and some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. But God has a school of certain things that he wants to instill or build in our lives, and that's brokenness, that's humbleness, that's meekness, that's contriteness, that's lowliness. God takes us through struggles in our life as a child of God. He brings us through deep adversities and trials and tribulations in our life. God's going to bring you through some struggles in your life and some dark times in your life. An old preacher said to me one time, from his brother George Simpson, he said to me, his wife, um, oh, what was her name? I forgot her name. Martha. 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 She was in a wheelchair, and he told me one day, I'll never forget it. He says, Brother Mike, he says, God's choicest servants suffer the most. That never left me. And as, as long as I've been preaching and teaching the word of God, I found this to be true. That God will take certain individuals and he'll bring them through some dark, dark times in their life. But through the darkness, that's when God is doing his greatest work in your life. Yeah. Yeah. It was in the dark time when Daniel seen the hand of God deliver him. It was in the, it was in the fire when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego mm -hmm. seen Jesus Christ walking in the midst of the fire with him. You're going to go through some dark times in your life, and God's going to take you through this university. He's going to take you through his school. And, and you're not going to like it. There's going to come some times in your life that there's going to be some trials and tribulations and, and literal tragedies in your life. But through the midst of that, that is when God is doing his greatest work. That is when you're going through God's schooling or God's university. If you would turn your Bible to the book of Isaiah, I just want to show you something as kind of a springboard before we get started with our message as we always do. If you would turn to the book of Isaiah, I believe it's chapter 30, Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, and if you were to look at verse 20, God is speaking to his people, Israel here, his chosen people, his beloved people. God is speaking to his people. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 20, and the Lord says, and though the Lord give you, look at this, the bread of what? Adversity. adversity. God says, I'm gonna, you're going to have the bread of adversity. You're going to have to deal with adversity. You're going to have to face adversity. And the waters of what? Affliction. Affliction. He says, God's going to give them the what? The bread of adversity and the water of affliction. Watch this. Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into the corner anymore, but thy eyes shall see thy teachers. Let's pray, Lord, we just come before you as your people. I pray that you'd make the scriptures clear to us, Father, this morning. Lord, and I know that there's several people in this room whom I love dearly that have gone through your university of affliction. They've learned brokenness. They've learned contriteness. They've learned how to suffer in the very school of university. And Lord, we, we thank you for these trials and tribulations that come our way because it's through them where we truly learn what life is and the brevity and the frailty of life. And Lord, we thank you for all that you do. We thank you for Jesus Christ who suffered on the cross for our sins, Lord. And we thank you for that. Thank you for everyone that's here, Lord. Pray that you just be with everyone, fill them with your spirit, and give us the grace to study your word. In Christ's name, amen. 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 So before we kind of get started, let's just talk about this a little bit more. When we think about what God is doing in our life, God is going to bring you through trials and tribulations and tragedies and sufferings and hardship in your life. We're going to face some things in the world. You're going to face some things individually in your life, but it's all part of God's schooling and it's all part of God's university in what God is doing. The courses 
that God gives us a brokenness, humbleness, meekness, contriteness, and lowliness. Amen. Those are the studies and the courses that you're going to have to take. If you were to look at Psalm 51, turn to Psalm 51. Psalm 51, verse 17. Psalm 51, verse 17. The Bible says the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Look at this. And a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, thou will not despise. It says the sacrifices, what we offer to God is what? It's a broken spirit. It's a broken heart. And sometimes we have to go through certain things in order for God to bring us to that point in our life where we are totally broken. And then once we're broken before God, God reveals more of his will, more of his plan, more of his direction. That is the very teaching of what God is doing in our life. God is bringing, he's bringing us to a point where we're broken and we are contrite in our lives. So the sacrifices of God is what? It's a broken Heart and a broken spirit, thou will not despise. Now, if you look at Psalm chapter 34, right? Now, mind you, David writes these Psalms here. And if you look at Psalm 34, verse 18, Psalm 34, verse 18. Now, look at this. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save as such of a contrite spirit. Don't you like that verse? Amen. The Bible says God is close to those people that have a broken heart. When your heart is broken and you've been going through some struggles and trials and tragedies and even despair in your life, that is when God is doing his greatest work in your life. Amen. That is when the hand of God, he has you in his school, he has you in his university, and he says, I'm going to do something great in your life at this point. I'm going to take this trial, I'm going to take this tragedy, I'm going to take this tribulation, and I'm going to use it for my glory in your life. If you were to look at, look at that verse again, Psalm 34, verse 18, the Lord is nigh unto them that are a broken heart and saveth such of a, look at this, a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the what? Righteous. Of the righteous. You see that, guys? Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. Turn to Psalm 25, verse 9. Psalm 25, verse 9. Psalm 25 and verse 9. This is awesome. Look at it. It says, The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. Now, I want you to understand something here, but all of these characteristics we're seeing, brokenness, meekness, contriteness, listen, you're going to see each and every one of these things in the heart of each and every one of these individuals' lives that we're going to look at. And as we look at these people's lives, we're going to see that they had to go through this school of affliction. They had to go through the school of adversity, trial, and tribulation before God risen them up to where he wanted them to be. Over in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, look at it says. God's university in understanding these things. Look at it says in Ecclesiastes, the book of wisdom. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 2. It is better to go into the house of mourning than to go into the house of feasting. Now, once again, the house of mourning is a, is a funeral parlor. It's a place where people die. And Solomon says, it is better to go into the house of mourning, the funeral parlor, than to go into the house of feasting, where people are living it up and partying. He says, for that is the end of all men. And look what he says, and the living will lay it to heart. Now watch this. Verse 3 is the key. Sorrow is better than what? Wow. Laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made what? Better. It's made better, guys. God's going to take you through some things, right? He's going to take you through some sorrow. God's going to take you through some suffering. God's going to take you through some trials and some tribulation. Because that's where the heart is made better. Sorrow is better than laughter. For by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made what? Better. It's made better. When Brother George Simpson said that to me, God's choicest servants suffer the most. I thought about it for a long time. It's never left my mind. And as I know some of you people out here, some of my closest family and friends in Christ, you've gone through great suffering because you're God's choicest servants. God's hand is on you. God's hand is on you. God's hand is on you in the midst of that adversity, in the midst of that trial, in the midst of that hurt, in the midst of that brokenness. And God is bringing you through his school, his university. If you were to think about Job, and look at Job says in Job 23, verse 10. Job 23, verse 10. 
Job has lost everything in his life, if you're not familiar with Job. His ten children are gone at this point. They were all killed in one day. Job's ten children killed in one day. Everything that he owned, his wealth, his livestock, everything was stripped from him in one day. Everything that this man possessed, everything that he worked for, and Job was a righteous man. He was a perfect man. And God looked down and he was one of God's choicest servants. But God says, I'm going to bring him through my school of affliction. I'm going to bring him through my school of adversity. I'm going to bring him through my university of trial and tribulation and tragedy. God allowed the devil to test him. And Job come out clean as can be. Job 23 verse 10. Look at this. Job is speaking. But he knoweth the way that I take. God knows the way I'm going. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth, say it out loud, everyone, as gold. Job says, God's going to try me. I'm going to go through the school of affliction. I'm going to go through the school of adversity. I'm going to go through the school of trial and tribulation. God is going to put me through this school. But when he has tried me, I'm going to come out like gold. I'm going to come shine on the other side. Praise God for that. Some of you have gone through some trials and tragedies and tribulations. And praise God, you came out like gold. Amen. Oh boy, did you come out like gold, some of you. I see some of your lives that I know personally, and you come out like gold. I think about the Kimballs, the Krogans, my friend Paul, and, and his wife Deb, whose people have gone through trials, lost their children, lost loved ones. And you know what they did? They come out like gold. They come out like gold. So before we dive into the message, you need to, I'm just trying to lay the groundwork as I normally do. But I want you to, I'm going to give you some definitions of three words that we have to understand these three words in order to really get the thrust of this message. But the number, the first word we're going to be looking at is the word tried. We're going to see a lot of this word tried. We're going to see a lot of the word uh, tempt. And then we're going to see a lot of the word trial. Okay. They're very similar how they're used in scriptures, a little bit different. But the word tried, it means to be made to go undergo trials or distress. It often used in a combination of much tried in the sense of teaching somebody something. The subject, it means to be subject to trials or distress or anguish by hardship, worry, and it means to be brought under trouble or the like. That's the word tried. The word, the next word is tempt. The word tempt, it means to test. It means to try. It means to see if it will come through. Then the next word is trial. We're going to use this word often. So a trial, it's a test of the performance, qualities, or stability of someone or something used. It's something used under pressure. It's used or tried in a, in a test or an experiment. It's a state of plan or anguish that tests patience, endurance, or belief. And it's to put you, listen to this, this was in the dictionary, the fiery trial that was passed through. The fiery trial that was passed through. That's in an English dictionary. So when we think about these classes, then we're gonna think about God's university. You go to sign up for courses in a college, right? And you see, you know, English or literature or whatever. You know I me, mean? I don't take any college courses. So <laughs> some of you guys can come up with any better ones right off the top of your head, you know. And it, it, but you always have these courses. When you sign up for these courses, you, you know what God's courses are? Listen to this. Tribulation. Who's going to sign up for that course? Do you want to sign up for affliction? Oppression? Persecution? Those are the classes that God has. Hell's holds in his university. Few people are going to enroll in these courses. Very few people. Hey, most of us are like, God, you're going to take me through this school. You're going to take me through this university. God, I can't do it. Well, God will not give you or take you through anything that you can't get through or that he won't enable you to get through. That's right. Do you understand that? God, if God is taking you and he's trying you and he's testing you and he's putting you into the university of his trials and tribulations and tragedies, he's going to see you through it. He's going to see you through it. Because you 
are his, are his, are his literally his coal that he's refining to that diamond in the refinest fire. So let's dive into this now. Let's turn to the book of Romans chapter 5 and let's get our illustrations going. Romans chapter 5 and verse 3. Romans chapter 5 and verse 3. Romans chapter 5 and verse 3. Now, once again, you have to store these in the back of your mind, these next few verses that we're going to be looking at, okay? Just understand the thought content or the direction of where we're going. So Romans chapter 5 and verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in what, people? Tribulation. What do we glory in? Tribulations. Tribulations. That means problems, difficulties, trials. When you're saying, hey, man, I'm going through this trouble right now. Glory to God. Why? It's because you're in class. You're in class. As God is going to do something great in your life. Not only so, but we glory in tribulations. All right. Also, watch this. Also knowing that tribulation, what does it do, people? It works what? Patience. It works patience. You see that? So when you're going through tribulation, it's teaching you patience. Okay? That's why we always say, never pray for patience. Because if you pray for patience, God's going to give you what? Tribulation. tribulation. But I, you know, so many people, oh God, I'm praying for patience. That's the worst thing. Whatever you do, do not pray for patience. Because let me tell you something. As soon as you stop praying for patience, God's going to bring tribulation in your life. Don't ever pray for patience. All right? Now look at this, right? Not only so, but we glory in tribulation also knowing that tribulation work is patience. Now watch this. Patience what? Experience. experience. You see that? And experience what? Oh. oh, notice the process of God's teaching here. Notice what God is doing. So we have, first of all, not only so, we glory in tribulation. So the tribulations are teaching us patience. Right? So every time you have a problem at work, every time you're faced with something around you, that tribulation is to teach you what? Patience. patience. Now, have you ever failed in patience sometimes? I mean, you, you all of a sudden, you're trying, God's trying to teach you patience through the tribulations, and what do you do? You explode. God says, okay, you got to make this test up again. I'm going to give you a little more what? Tribulation, right? You guys see how it works? So pass the first test. So you don't have to have a makeup test. I remember the teacher would come, oh, Mike, you've got to have a makeup test. I'd be like, oh. My friend over here, Bob Mason, he had a million makeup tests. He was in high school. Right there. <laughs> Bob, you've got to have a makeup test. Right? And listen, we don't want a makeup test. So you know what to do when you're being trialed and you're, and you're facing tribulation? Work your way through it with patience. And God says, okay, he passed out the flying car. Let's pull back a little bit on. Okay? Now watch, right? Watch how it works. Tribulation, know what the tribulation works? Patience. And what does patience do? It works what? Experience. You see that? It, so when you go through trials and tribulations, it's teaching you experience. It's teaching you how to cope with life. One of the things we do in jujitsu, you get in a bad position. You have, a, you have a guy like Andy grappling. He's got you in a bad position. You know what you're doing? You're learning experience. Through the what? Through the tribulation and the pressure. Guys, this is what life is all about. God is teaching us patience through what? Tribulation. And then we learn patent from there. We go on to experience. We learn to experience what life is all about. You can only learn these things through trials and tribulations. Watch this. And experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame. And I love this because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. Now, take what we just looked at, the circumference of verse, those verses, and store it in your mind. And now turn to the book of James, chapter 1. Now go to the book of James, chapter 1. James, chapter 1, and verse 2. James, chapter 1, and verse 2. James writes, My brethren, count it all what? Joy. When you fall into diverse temptations. Oh, here we go again. What? Pastor Mike, you want me to count it joy when I'm, when I'm faced with this adversity, this trial, this tribulation, this struggle? Yes, because that is when God is doing his greatest work. Do you understand that? That is when you are in class and you're in the university of God schooling and God is seeing you through something because God wants you to learn something in the midst of it. He wants you to learn something about yourself. He wants you to learn something about him. He's trying to reveal his will and his purpose in your life. So we just seen that in Romans, Paul says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Now James is saying, brother, look at my brother and count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing that the trying or the testing of your faith, what does it do? You see that? It's still, it's working patience. Now watch it. But let patience 
have her perfect work that ye may be perfect, entire, wanting nothing. You have to surrender to God. Okay, you're doing the work in me through this tribulation, through this trial, mm -hmm. through these tragedies, through this difficult moment in my life. You're doing a work in me. That's how God works. Okay, now turn to 1 Peter. Let's look at this. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 6. Now notice how all of them start out with rejoicing in tribulation, with rejoicing in problems. I mean, most of us, we have a problem, we're like, oh. And we stop. How many of you guys, let's, let's, we don't have to show your hands, but how many when you get a problem, all of a sudden, the blankety blanks are going, and then, come on guys, let's be for real. You know, like, let's, let's be for real. And we're faced with this adversity, we're faced with this trial, we're faced with this tribulation, we're faced with this person. And all of a sudden, we just, Ugh. Now watch this. Watch what it says, 1 Peter 1, verse 6, right? Wherein ye greatly rejoice through now for a season, if need be, you're in what? Heaviness. If you're in heaviness through the manifold temptations. Peter's saying, listen, I want you to rejoice in this season of your life because you're in heaviness, you're in suffering temptations. Now watch this. That the trial, we already gave you the definition of these words, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than what? Gold. Than that of gold that perishes. Though it be tried with fire, look at this, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. You know what God's going to do? He's going to put you through the fire. He's going to put you through the fire. You may have not even been through the fire yet. You may be young and praise God you haven't been there yet. But there is coming a time when you're going to go through the fire. It's coming. But once again, it was in the fire when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Hananiah, Ezra, and Mishael, it was in the fire when they seen Jesus. That's right. It was in the fire they seen Jesus Christ, the high and lofty one, lifted up. It was in the fire when God has you at the lowest point in your life when you reach up and the Spirit of God touches your heart. It's in the fire when you're closest to God. It's in the fire when you're seeing the glory of God being revealed to you. It's in the fire when God is showing you who He is and He's manifesting His beauty and His majesty. It's in the fire when God has reached down and touched the corridors of your heart and He lifted you up. It's in the fire when God has delivered you. Amen. It's in the fire when you meet God. That's what you need in the fire. And David says, it is good for me that I've been afflicted, that I might learn thy precepts. Mm -hmm. David, what? Yeah, David says, it's good for me. It's good for me that I went through adversity. It's good for me that I went through trial. It's good for me that I went through affliction. Why? Because now I'm learning. Mm -hmm. Now I'm learning. In the midst of my adversity, in the midst of my struggle, that's when I learned the greatest. Mm -hmm. That's when I learn more about myself, and that's when I learn more about God and who He is. So that the trial of your faith being much more, verse 7, much more precious than the gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at His appearing of Jesus Christ. Now, turn to 1 Peter chapter 4. Now look at this one, guys. Stay with me. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. I love this. Peter said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened unto you. Some of us think, why has this happened to me? Because you've got to go through the fire. You've got to go through God's university. Why? It's because that's where you're going to learn the most about life and about this world. You've got to go through the fire. You've got to go through it. That's when God does his greatest work. You learn in school. You learn in God's university. That is when God is doing his greatest work. Mm -hmm. Under the opposition, persecution, and affliction. Struggles, trials, tragedies. He says, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice. Look at it says. See that? Here it is again. Verse 13. What does it say out loud? Say it out loud, everyone. What? Rejoice. But rejoice in so much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings. 
that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceedingly joy. Mm -hmm. Now let's turn back to the book of Exodus and we'll begin to see where God's truth. God took his nation of Israel. He took them to his university. God took his own people. Class was held with the nation of Israel for 400 years under bondage and under affliction. God says, my people, you guys have to go through my university. You have to go through my school. And God took his people, the nation of Israel, and he literally put them under bondage and under affliction for 400 years. But you know what the Bible says? If you were to look at uh, 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 Exodus chapter 1 and verse tw uh, 12, right? It says, but the more they afflicted them, the more they what? The more they multiplied and the more they grew. The more affliction that they went through, the more adversity that the, that the Egyptians were putting on God's people, the stronger they got. It made them stronger. Do you understand that? God's going to bring you through affliction. God's going to bring you through trials and tragedies and tribulations. Why? To strengthen you as his people. For 400 years, God's people were used as slaves. They were being whipped, beat, and tortured. They were lugging stones and making mortar and making bricks. But every time it was making them stronger and stronger and stronger. Their offspring was getting stronger and stronger. Why? Through their affliction. See, God does great things in the lives of individuals. If you were to think about all the individuals that God has enrolled in his school, in his university, sometimes these courses begin with opposition, persecution, adversity, difficulty, trials, tragedy, tribulations. Each and every one of these individuals have gone through such things. Let's look at another example in Genesis chapter 22, verse 1. Genesis chapter 22, verse 1. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 1. Genesis 22 and verse 1. And it says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt. There's our word. God did tempt. He's testing Abraham. And he said unto him, Abraham, And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son. Now watch this. He said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee unto the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. So for three days, he has this in the back of his mind. He has to go on this journey in the back of his mind to offer his son as a sacrifice. You know what God was doing? God was testing him and putting him through the trial. For three days in his mind, my son's going to be dead. My son's going to die. By my own hand. But you know what he thought? But God's going to resurrect him. Mm -hmm. Abraham says, listen, if God, if God promised me that through him is going to come the seed, and God made that promise, and I'm going to believe the promise of God, I know that Abraham knew that God was going to see him through that trial. Mm -hmm. And for three days he thought his son was dead. And out here on the third day, power of the resurrection, what happened? God gave life to him. Mm -hmm. But Abraham was, he counted it, if, if I kill him, God could raise him again from the dead. Let's talk about our next individual, Job. Job had a crash course in God's college. God, it, it, the devil came and he's tempting God against Job. God says, okay, you can do whatever you want in his life, but you can't kill him. And we know the story. The devil goes in and destroys everything in Job's life. First, he takes his livestock, he takes everything that he owned, everything that he worked for, all of his possessions, everything is gone in one day's time. Then ultimately, the devil kills Job's ten children. All of his ten children are dead. Job says, when he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Listen, Job was one of God's choicest servants. And listen, God's choices, servants, suffer the most. They're the ones that suffer the most. They're the ones that face the affliction. They're the ones that face the tribulation. They're the ones that have to deal with it. Why? It's because they are 
God's choices servants. I mean, think about it. God's looking at the devil. Hey, have you considered my servant Job? That there's none like him in the earth. He's a perfect and he's an upright man. He's one that fears God and he eschews evil. The devil says, let me at him. I'll get him to curse you. Oh, yeah? You can put him under affliction. You can put him under trial. You can put him under tribulation. You can bring tragedy in his life. And he will not curse me. Job comes out with an honor roll. Always. Let's talk about another individual. How about King David? King David's class began after he slew the giant. But let me tell you something. After he slew the giant, Saul wanted to kill him. If you know the story of the Philistines, David lived with the Philistines for a year and four months. He was living amongst the vagabonds. He was living with the enemies of Israel. David was hiding from Saul in a cave for years. All by himself. In a dark cave. Class was held for David, the great king in Israel. In a dark, cold, wet cave with nobody there. And you know what God was teaching him? He was teaching him who he was. In the darkest times in David's life was when he wrote some of the greatest psalms in his life. In the darkest times of David's life, it was when he was drawing strength from God. It was in the darkest times David, God's anointing was upon David. See, God works in the darkest times of our life. You might be going through some struggles or trials or face some of those tragedies, but God's choice of servants will suffer the most. Saul was trying to kill him. He threw a javelin at him three times. Dave was in to David was in total isolation. But it was there God did the greatest work in his life. Let me give you a New Testament example. The Apostle Paul. He's the one who wrote the verse that we had looked at. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations, also knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. If you were to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, let's look at Paul's schooling. Let's look at some of Paul's classes that he took. God's choicest servant, the Apostle Paul. In the New Testament, outside of Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul was God's choicest servant. And being his choicest servant, he had to go through the greatest affliction than anyone else. Ultimately, he ended up dying in Rome. And they cut his head off. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians to confirm his apostleship and his ministry. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 23, Are they the ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant. In stripes, if you don't know what those stripes are, it was Paul was whipped. He was whipped with a cat and nine tail. Of stripes, above measures, in prison. He was in and out of prison, constantly in and out of prison. And when they put him in prison, they would put him in the depth of the prison, by the way. More frequent in depths often. Of the Jews, look at this, five times received thy 40 stripes. Can you imagine that? On five different occasions, he was whipped with 39 lashes. On five different occasions. He was in this school of affliction. Thrice was I beaten with rods. They beat him with metal rods on three different occasions. Verse 20, look at 25. Once was I stoned. They stoned him to death in Lystra, but God risen him up, rose him back from the dead. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. Imagine that. A day and a day, and I have been in the deep. Imagine that three times you're in ship, three boat wrecks, just boat trashed and destroyed. You guys know what happened. Then Paul ends up on an island there, and then a, a poisonous snake bites him. I mean, you want to talk about having a bad day? I mean, Paul's out there, he's on that boat, man, the boat capsizes, they're all floating to shore on pieces of wood and stuff, and all of a sudden, a, boat, a snake comes out and bites him. Yeah. Then they tell him, hey, he. He, he's, he didn't die, and so they think he's some sort of, you know, first they thought the snake bit him, so he was an evil man, but he didn't die. Now they think he's some sort of God. But I love what Paul did. He preached them what? Jesus and him crucified. <laughs> he won that whole island over of those pagans. Sometimes God will put you in a trial or tribulation just to get you somewhere where you need to be. 
He'll put you somewhere where you need to be. Mm. Pastor Mike, God will put me in the hospital. He might. Mm -hmm. Somebody might need to hear the gospel. Mm -hmm. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice was I shipwrecked. A night and a day have been in the deep. He was there all night and all day. Can you imagine how scary that would be? I mean, just floating around. Yes. Shocks. Yeah, <laughs> Look at this, right? In journeys, verse 26, in journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of heathen, in perils, perils is tri trials and tribulations and tragedies. That's what it is, guys. In perils of the city, in perils of the wilderness, in perils of the sea, in perils of among false brethren. How'd you like to be in school with the Apostle Paul? <laughs> in weariness, in painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, besides those things which are without, which cometh upon me daily. Look at this. The care of all the churches. Who is weak? Am I not weak? Who is offended? Am I not? Am I, uh, and I burn not. Look at this. If I must needs glory, let's say it out loud, I will what? Glory. You're going to glory in what? Firmness. Where are you going to glory? In your infirmities. Where are you going to take pleasure? In my tribulations, in my distress. Why? Because God is doing his greatest work there. Turn to the book of James. We're going to lay a little bit more dialogue to make things a little bit more clear. So turn back to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. James says it here. James chapter 1 verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh what? Patience. You see that? But let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect, entire, wanting nothing. Now, go to Psalm 119 verse 71. I already quoted it, but I want you to see it. Psalm 119 verse 71. David states here, it is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might what? Learn thy precepts. It was good that I was in that cave all alone. It was good that I suffered this affliction under the hand of Saul. It was good that I faced adversity and trial in my life. It was good when I, in Ziklag, when the men talked about stoning me and killing me. Those events were good because it was then I learned your precepts and learned your word. See, sometimes when life is great, you don't think you need God. When everything is going great and you're out of class, I mean, you got you think you're like on summer vacation like a kid. And then it's like, nope, God says, nope, you gotta get back to what? You gotta get back to school. You gotta get back to where you have order and structure, and you're gonna learn. And you're gonna learn under affliction. You're gonna learn under adversity. You're gonna learn under trial. You're gonna learn under tribulation. You're gonna learn under pressure. That's where you learn the most. That's when you seek God the most. Now turn back to our starting verse in the Isaiah now. Now watch. This will make a lot more sense to you. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 30. Isaiah 30 verse 20. I'm sorry. Isaiah 30 verse 20. And the Lord speaking in the context. And though the Lord give you the bread of affliction and the water of affliction, the bread of adversity, I'm sorry, the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed. What are the teachers? Adversity and affliction. Watch this. Be removed into corner and many, but thy eyes shall see thy what? Teachers. Your eyes shall see the teachers. You know what your teachers are? Adversity, struggle, tribulation, trials, tragedies. Those are the lessons that God brings you and I through. And he does it with his choicest servants. You want to be one of God's favorites? Oh, you're going to suffer. <laughs> Look at Isaiah 48, verse 10. Isaiah 48, verse 10. God is speaking in the context once again. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 48, verse 10. It says, Behold, I have refined thee. I've refined thee, but not with silver. Look at this. I, uh, Isaiah 48, verse 10. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee. Say it out loud, everyone. Where? In the furnace of affliction. You want to be a follower of God? God's going to put you in the furnace. He's going to put you in the furnace. You're going to face some dark times in your life. You're going to face the heat of the world. You're going to go through the fire. 
you're going to go through the fire. I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 15. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 15. Now, everything that you go through is for a reason, okay? And I want you to see this. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 15. If you, I, I, you should have verse 15 memorized. If you can memorize through 18, awesome. But I want you to see this. Look at it, it says, for all things are for what? Pause right there. That means that everything happens in your life is part of God's plan and it's part of God's purpose in your life. That means every trial, every tribulation, every adversity, every conflict, every struggle you go through, it's for your sake. No matter what it is, no matter how insignificant it may seem, no matter how, tribu how, how tiny the problem is, it's for your glory, it's for God's power to in your life. All things are for your sake. Whatever is happening in your life, is for the power, is for the glory of God. God is trying to teach you things through conflict and adversity and struggle and trial and tribulation and adversity. God is working in us. He says, all, for all things are for your sakes. Why? Watch this, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound for the what? Glory for the glory of God. You see that? Everything that happens is for the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, we don't give up, we don't throw in the towel. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed when? Day by day, by day. day. For our light affliction, there it is, our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Now what does this light affliction do? Look at it, it says, worketh for us a far more what? Exceeding eternal, exceeding eternal weight of glory. You see that? Your affliction is working in you. While we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Our greatest lessons are the lessons of affliction. That's when God does his greatest work in us. I'm going to kind of sum it all up very briefly. You ever think about Joseph? God took that young boy, Joseph. He took the adversity of his brothers, and his brothers hated him. They hated him. They wanted to kill him, his brothers. They were going to kill him. We know the story, but one of the brothers, I think it was Judah, he said, no, don't kill him. And he says, just throw him in this pit. And then somebody says, no, we're going to kill him. And then he sells him off as a slave. He goes into Egypt. He's sold as a slave in Egypt. Then he gets falsely accused by part, by part of his wife. And then he's thrown in prison. He was in God's university. He was in God's university. He's thrown in prison. Everything he had, everything he loved was taken away from him. He was an outcast, thrown in prison. But don't you like the end of that story? No. He was risen to be a great king and a great leader. I love those stories. I love those stories. God took Moses, and you know what God did with Moses? He got him out on the backside of the desert. Where it was just, there was nobody. It was just him and the sheep. He was on the backside of the desert, and a sheep went missing. Moses is looking for that sheep. He finds the sheep, and there's God speaking to him out of a burning bush. And the bush wasn't consumed. That bush is, bush is a picture of the nation of Israel being burnt, tortured, but not consumed. And then one of my favorite stories, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar says, if you bow... <coughs> If you bow, you won't be thrown into the fire. But if you don't bow, we're going to throw you in the fire. He says, so be it, God. They said, our God can deliver us. But if not, we still will not bow. Amen. Amen. Yep. They took those boys, threw them in the fire. A lot of people don't know this, too, but they were eunuchs. They were castrated. Right? You know that? <clears throat> See, a lot of people don't know certain things about the Bible. They went through great affliction and great adversity. They were taking young boys into slavery under the hand of the Babylonians, Nebuchadnezzar. They were brought under affliction. Now he's thrown in the fire. And what do they see in the midst of the fire? Nebuchadnezzar says, didn't we throw four men in there? He says, but I see, I see uh, three men, but we see four. And one of them looks like the son of God. Amen. Those corrupt Bibles says the son of the gods. No. Nebuchadnezzar knew that it was Jesus Christ in the midst of that. Why do you think Nebuchadnezzar, the later part of his life, turned around and got saved? Amen. Let me tell you something. But it was there with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
met Jesus Christ in the fire. Some of you went through great afflictions in your life. And that affliction brought you to Jesus Christ. Right, man. That's right. Amen. It was that affliction. Amen. It was that trial. It was that tragedy that brought you to Jesus Christ. Some of you are in God's school right now. And God's got some lessons he's going to teach you. I think about Daniel. They said to Daniel, if you pray to any other God, you will be thrown into the lion's den. Daniel says, listen, I've been praying to my God for years. Mm -hmm. You're going to throw me in the lion's den? So be it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Because God's going to do whatever he's going to do. He wasn't worried about it. <gasps> Man, they threw Daniel in that lion's den. And what was Daniel doing? He's down there patting the lions. <laughs> <laughs> he's, just, he's just all over those lions on his lap. You guys know the story. And then they took... The men who accused Daniel of doing something wrong, and they it says before they even hit the ground, the lions crushed their bones and destroyed them. Let me tell you something, right? God does his greatest work in your hurt, in your affliction, in your pain, in your sufferings and trials. I think about some of you that have lost family members. You are God's choice of servants. And his hand is upon you through that trial, through that tribulation, mm -hmm. because you are God's choice of servants. Mm -hmm. We serve an awesome God. Mm -hmm. He said, Pastor Mike, but what did I really learn mm -hmm. through the trial, the tribulation, or the tragedy? You know what you learned? <laughs> Guys, <laughs> you learned that this world ain't your home. <laughs> you learn, right, that this corruptible, what? It must put on incorruption. And this mortal, what? It must put on immortality. You learn through the midst of it that this world is just a temporal, contaminated, sinful state and that we must leave this place. Amen. That's what you've learned the most. Mm -hmm. That's what you've learned the most. Yep. You know what else you've learned? I don't want to be here anymore. Amen. <laughs> Listen, you look at this world, you're like, this place, you can have it, man. Yeah. See, God teaches you through these tribulations and trials. He teaches you not to love this world and neither the things that are in this world. Yeah. Some of us are so in love with the world, God has to blow everything up so you can realize that those things don't mean anything. Amen. That's, that's a whole other course. We can preach that in another lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer, and then um, we'll have Trish come, and uh, we'll sing that song. She's oh, she's gone. She, we, oh, okay. where's Bev? Bev left, too? Oh, we don't want to do that with our piano. Yeah. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Lord, we just thank you and praise you for who you are. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. We thank you for all the fiery trials that we faced and the tribulations. Knowing that tribulation works patience and patience experience and experience hope. So, Lord, I, I know that there's several families here, your choice of servants, that have gone through deep heartache in their life because they're your choice of servants. And they've gone through the university of tribulation and trials and tragedies. You've, you've taken them through it. I thank you that they've stayed their course and that they're fighting the good fight of faith still to this day in the midst of all their hurt and tribulation. And Father, we just thank you for everything that you've done. We thank you for the word of God that you've given to us. And Lord, we do thank you for the storms that we see all around us. These are the very things that you have revealed to us to show us that this world is not our home. That this world is a fallen, sinful place that we need to be delivered from. Help us to learn these things, Lord. And Father, we just thank you for everything. In Christ's name. Amen. 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 I'll let Brian come. Well, um, we're going to go to invitation. Where is our